Sylvester Pius. His eyes have alighted upon the handmaiden, and in the month of March, he will be tying the knots with her. So please have him in your prayers. He's one of my sons in the Lord, and with him I'm well pleased. Maybe if we have a picture of what God is doing in worry, because I've been telling my wife the, the rapid growth in that work in the last six months is uh, as well as touching my heart. They just put together an auditorium there, and it's it's beautiful. It's beautiful. So keep him in your prayers, and at the appointed time, we'll be sending our contribution for that wedding. All right. God bless you. Please be seated. All right. Isaiah chapter 6. Our labor has been to ascend into a place where by perception we as believers can begin to function with or in the experience of full knowledge. There is a way In which God knows things. And I came tonight to announce to you. That that dimension of knowledge. Of things. Situations. Persons. Circumstances. Is not beyond the reach of the believer. The invitations to functioning. In the similitude of the Christ. Also comes with endowments of the things that the Lord has. So that if I sang a song playing a keyboard, it would be criminal to tell you to reproduce that act without a keyboard. That's why we're probing into these tools. For example, before we go into Isaiah, give me. Hebrews chapter 12. Let me show you something. Where's Timothy? Come. Wherefore, the Bible says, seeing, and that's perceiving, we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us. And let us run with patience. Thank you. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin we does so easily beset us. Sorry for that break. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us. My verse of emphasis is in the second verse. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Now, pay more attention. 
who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross despising the shame and he sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Now, the Bible is instructing us that when we come into the kingdom, we must operate with the consciousness that we are not isolated beings. There is a cloud of witnesses. And if you go further down in um, Hebrews chapter 12, you come into the fuller knowledge of what that cloud is comprised of. It's a community of the spirits of just men made perfect. Men whose spirits have been aligned in eternity and whose assignment now is to form like a cheerleading crowd. Communicating energies are stewarded by the spirit, communicating encouragements whose lives can now be looked into for inspiration. Are you with me? That's what the cloud is. You are not alone. You are encompassed with so great a cloud of witnesses. And the Bible says as a result of being in that cloud, there's something you must do. It's that you lay aside every weight. There is the communication of weights in the cloud. And the sin. The word sin there does not have to do with transgression or iniquity. It comes with not being able to meet up with a set mark. And I've explained this verse before. That the mark here is a focused mark. Verse 2 will show us that. When you come into the cloud, you are persuaded by the faith of Abraham to major in that. By the revelatory powers of Paul to major in that. So a believer can say, I just want to be like Abraham. But Abraham does not meet up as the possessor of the reality of faith or the gatekeeper at the gate of faith. He does not pass for all the communications of God. Somebody will say, me, I want to be a star. I want my fasting to save a generation. It's good. But there's more to what God is advertising. So there are burdens that we draw from the cloud. And then there is the possibility of committing the sin of changing focus. That you begin to look outside the Christ. The sin that easily beset us. It's not many sins. So it's not adultery. It's not fornication. Everybody who fellowships in that cloud will come into the experience of the same sin. And the Bible says that we should now run with patience. That word can be endurance because your journey of conformity will only continue if you can endure. There are things you want God to solve today that will not be solved today. And you will need to stay true. Because you need to be able to, by understanding, marry those two things. Have you seen somebody patiently running before? What does running portend? Impatience. So they are saying we should run with patience. It means you will run suffering long. You will run with endurance. The race that is set before you. And it now tells you how to run. So that you know that the sin is a focus, a sin of focus. It says looking unto Jesus. Some other translation says looking away from all because the cloud is a cloud of many. Looking away from all and looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Who for the joy that was set before him. So you would think that Jesus operated above the law of perception. But when you look at here, you find out that even his progressions in God were governed by sustained perfection. There was a picture that Jesus saw. And when they whipped him, he may have wanted to respond. But he compared the response to the outcome of his whipping. And he journeyed on, patiently run. Is somebody with me? So even Jesus, the Bible said that for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross. So the endurance of Jesus on the cross was not a show of his mature nature. 
It was not that he went to a school like those ancient schools where they teach men to be able to operate under intense pain. I think many years ago, I watched a movie to Young Fat or so. They were whipping him and the guy was just minding his business. And so his American boss asked him, how did you do that? He said they were trained in Tai Chi to be able to allow their soul go on a journey when their body is experiencing pain. If your soul is not where your body is, you know no pain. Because it's the soul that interprets pain. Are you with me? So Jesus didn't journey out of his body. It was not a lifeless body that was taking the strokes. But every stroke landed upon a spiritual substance that he had found. And there's a joy before me. The Bible says he endured the cross and despised the shame. I've taught many times, I taught about Jesus on the cross. That the Jesus on the crucifix that is on your chain is clothed, right? They tied cloth around this private area. If you go and check, you find out that criminals are crucified without dignity. So Jesus died naked. The first feedback of Adam was what? I heard your voice walking in the garden and I hid myself because Jesus needed to travel back to Adam before he could redeem Adam. So he achieved stark nakedness. That's how they crucified your master. It's because people I will repent a a naked Jesus. So they now put cloth, white cloth around. And you know the, in the movie, how will you go naked because you want to act Jesus. So no cloth was tied. So the death was not only gruesome, was not only painful, it was shameful. But as people mocked him, the Bible said he despised it. And the substance from which he drew the energy to despise shame and to endure the cross was that he could perceive in full knowledge the joy that was set before him. Can you perceive? I've shared with you that some years ago I was ministering in FSF Lautech and as I was about rounding up about five, six years ago, about six years ago or seven, um, the Lord began to speak to me. That was the day I was still testing the waters of the word of knowledge. And the Lord said to me that there was a, a graduating lady. And there were four of them, four friends. And that there was this lecturer who had determined that if they don't sleep with, with him, they will not graduate. I know how it works. They won't fail his course. They will fail another person's course. And so they will be in school. And that at that, that day, her three friends had gone at different times to sleep with the lecturer. And F's had become A's. And she was the only one waiting for that, what do you call that? that? That miracle. Because you know how that miracle will come in church. I was almost going to have an extra year. And miraculously, my F turned to A. Will you not dance? So I said, why is she? Let her come forward. And I still remember dark, a little bit plump. She ran from the back in tears. I said, the Lord told me to tell you, if you sleep with the lecturer, you graduate this year. But if you say no, he will not help you. You have an extra year. And then the tears became more. I said, but so that your waiting can be aided, by the time you finish your extra year, you step into youth service. Where God will have taken you in life will be like five years ahead of those that went ahead of you. She did not sleep with the lecturer. She had an extra year. You don't want to hear the story. What do you think people will say? Say, is he not? He's, he didn't say, come and be sleeping with him. He said, let him just sleep with you. This once. And you go. Nobody will even know. Say, you, you leave school. She endured the shame of the extra year. She bore that or despised the shame of the extra year. Endured the cross of staying back in school. Because of the sight of hope. That's what we call it. The sight of hope. That's the sight that comes out from hope. That if I stay with Jesus, it may look like we went down together now. But because he cannot stay down, he means there will be a resurrection. Oh, what a 
not many gates of compromise that we walk into because we are void of perception. So you start business and you begin to doctor numbers and you begin to use unjust skills. Don't you think that the one who called you to do business has mastered that dimension? It can't go down. How, why will you call corners? I've shared with you my story when we began. A young man walked up to me and said, you can preach small, small. I said, I'm trying. You can even pray a little. I said, I'm trying. You can sing very well. I said, yes. He said, but you cannot see in the spirit. And it was an experience that I could not testify of. We were in Lesbora Hall that time. He said, you can grow big with time. I said, what? He said, there's a young man down at Roger's side. He has bowls of water. All you need to do is bow down and he gives you access to wash your face in the bowl of water. Then you can see and join it with these things that you can do. We call it combined service. When you start the service, you start with Jesus. When, uh, you pray. And people will think that it's the prayer that opened your eyes. But the spirit is waiting. Uh, what's the name of that spirit? Uh, he's, he's sitting at the backstage. He's waiting for the time when the Holy Ghost will be sent to the door. And Mio will now sit in front of the altar and be still watching realities. And now told the young man, perception. This book was given to an unlearned man. He said, I cannot read it for I am unlearned. The same book was given to a man that was learned. He said, I am learned, but the book is sealed. I said, you claim that I can teach a little. It means I have access. The God who gave that access will open my eyes in time. I don't need shortcuts. If he doesn't give me sight now, then it means I'm not supposed to see. I began to see little, 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 little. I remember I was going to preach in Ondo that time. And then Wali, that's um, Prophet Adesso Jadikule called me and said I was in prayers. I believe he still does that because that time, every time I'm going to minister somewhere, he'll be preaching at home. He'll be praying at home. That's what he used to do. And he will give me words of knowledge to say, sir. So if he's hearing now, he has stopped doing it, but maybe he should resume again. He will say, sir, maybe tell Lloyd, this place I am going to, God will come in this special way. Just do what he has sent you to do. He will advertise himself. Sometimes he will warn of adversity. This is what they will do. It's okay. So he now told me that God said you have been asking him that you want a tool to help people. In this particular meeting, he said he will come. And at the gates of preaching and in the middle of your preaching, entering into, you know, making life examples, like I do. Make life examples, do all those things, will open. Don't be afraid. Whatever he tells you, say it, and you will see it happen. And from that day, that door has been opened, and it's intensifying. What if I had received it in a bowl? Ram, let me just remember when we used to was Jerry with us when we used to do miracle services that's the way I used to start and I've shared with you the Lord told me that somebody's daddy is owing maybe two million now but I'm afraid so I say well there's somebody your dad is owing between 1.8 million and 3 million come out and the person will come and I'll say how much say size 2 million say, ah! okay good so I used to call it testing the waters so you do one, two. Ah, Bill, I said the thing don't open. No. Uh -huh. Then we now jump into it, and then fearless labors will now start. So somebody is asking, how are you so bold to say the things that you say? Progressions. But I could have entered it in 2013 by washing my face with a bowl. And the first time it will be bound down washing my face with a bowl. Maybe after a while it will be bring chicken. And once you start killing things, you will not stop killing until you start killing people. Because it's chicken here, the end. After one year it will be goat. Even you should be afraid because the size is getting bigger. Then it will be a cow. Then it will be a list of the people that you love in progressions until you even become tired of your life. Because you are willing to take something out of a season. 
We love mangoes. But we are willing to wait because it makes all things beautiful in his time. One of the tools that imparts patience of you want patient endurance. That's what the Bible merges together in the line long suffering. What makes you stay is because there is a joy set and you have perceived it. Oh, may your eyes be open. <laughs> ah. So in Isaiah chapter 6, we began to read from it. There are four things of five, four things that I need us to look at. Because when we say come beyond the clouds, perceiving beyond the clouds, there is need to bring us into the consciousness of the sights that are beyond the cloud. So in the year that King Uzziah died, I also saw the Lord. In the day that the Lord brings us beyond the clouds foundationally our profession or let me use the word confession our confession of sight will be that we saw the Lord there will be a rush of the witness of the spirit as to the shape of God that interacts you remember on Tuesday I was sharing with us on the subject of Hagar and um of Hagar and and the El Roi. Yeah. Now, I was saying to us that her visitation was of an angel. But why did she call the Lord El Roi? Because she understood that the angel's vocal cords had been lent to the God who sees me. The one who shepherds me. And so she could identify the speaker beyond the utterances of the angel. So that in that day that you are brought beyond the clouds, beyond the lights, beyond the drops of oil, beyond the, the thundering activities, beyond what do people see, the stars, beyond the numbers, there will be cognitive knowledge that there is a God who speaks to me. That's the first thing. Until the consciousness of God is forged, then the reality of being above the clouds has not been established. That's one. If you go further, you will see the sights and the witness of the seraphims. That's the second thing Isaiah encountered. The Bible says above that throne stood the seraphims. Each one had six wings and twain, with twain he covered his face and with twain he covered his feet and with twain he did fly. Let's go on. And one cried unto another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The witness of the cherubims, which could be a literal witness of the cherubims or a lookalike witness, is not just sustaining the visions of God, but brings to you the witness of God's present revelational position. God is here as what? You understand what I mean now? God is here as what? The train of his robe fills the temple. What essence? I've shared with us that some years ago I went on a journey, I think it was to Eden. Okay, it was with Daniel. It was, Daniel was my traveling keyboard this that time. And we walked into the meeting. It was a three-day meeting. Awesome meeting. And it was the first day. I was to minister the first night, the second morning, and then come back to Bumash. It was my early days of travel. I think Pastor Victor was with me too. It was in his house we stayed. And as we began, when we walked into the meeting, the meeting was already in a frenzy you know that those, those years of the angelic dances and you remember and so everybody was in that kind of frenzy and we remember the song was hallelujah is an heavenly language and the song is not bad well, but the frenzy was what caught me because my perception was that a spirit had had added itself it was as though people were not like passed out, 
when I use the word frenzy, I mean it's like their consciousness is numbed. So it will be hard to say, hello, oh, the person is. I hope you know this, this clap, clap, clap thing. You can clap to a point that you, you become unconscious of your surroundings. What the, the reason why some of us are afraid of the frenzy, especially if we do not, if we are unable to discern the spirit behind it, many times we try to calm it, is because that frenzy opens a gate to spirits. It can be God, it can be the demonic. You remember that the admonition of Paul to the church was, be not drunk with wine wherein there is excess. Because anything that norms human consciousness opens a gate to spirits. So when you are drunk, you lose consciousness of your environment. So he says, be not filled with wine wherein there is excess, but be filled with the spirit. Because the spirit also can deliver a numbing thing. So when you say people are slain, have you done your research before? Why do people fall down? And stay on the ground. Some of them will not even hear the sermon again. They are just there. That's why we used to keep it behind the sermon. Some of them were apportioned to, to by knowledge know many things. I think I was with God's servant, um, Pastor Muiwa Nofiu, in, in NCCF Mina. And then I gave him a song. I remember that song. Something you do. Oh, wonderful, marvelous, at the works of my, my, my Lord. Ready is thy name. And God was strong in the house. So I now said, let's preach, let's preach. One lady now came and picked microphone and said, wonderful view. And that lady was out of the service for like three hours. So she did not even hear someone. If you ask the people, what happened to you? What would they say? Say, me, oh man. I've tried to interview people. But what pushes, at least I don't push you. I didn't push you. I didn't. I didn't force you that in Jesus' name you should fall down. Abi. And when you don't fall down, say you're a stupid person. Fall, fall down, fall down. And then the person falls down. There's a lot of theatrics. Sometimes, sometimes I believe those things are allowed so that we can be happy. Yeah, you, know, you shouldn't be sad about those things. Um, there's a way the nation is that if if you don't have those buffers, you might be you know so okay so now how did I get so now there is a need when the so we went that meeting and they began to sing that song and I became bothered so when I sat I think they respected my presence they now stopped even though some of them were still swearing and swear swirling and all of that so I now when it was time for me to preach I now you know immaturity I now said all the leaders stand up stand up so all of them stood up I said, is God in this meeting? They said, yes. I said, that's what? Because above the clouds, the ambiguity that surrounds the presence of God is dispelled. You will know the one that came. That's the witness of Isaiah. So, if you operate in the place that Isaiah was brought into, you will be sure. You can't do much of business, spiritual business, if the God or the face of God in the house is not known, no. when I teach faith, I, I think I've been explaining it little by little. Faith does not thrive on what he said. Though. God said, I will pass. The strength of you will pass is the God who said it. The substance in your heart is the God that said it. It is the integrity of that God that we build life on. Are you with me? When God speaks, the speakings of God begin is, 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 a, is, is a progression. It is God utterance, and then what is delivered is not words, it's God. So God's word is a logistic system that delivers God into places. If I say the Lord be with you, you think it's those words that will keep you? What will keep you? The Lord. So what I use the words to do is to project God. No wonder Jesus said that the words I speak unto you, they are spirit 
I need somebody to help me check that verse of scripture. You will likely f- we want to see if it is first letter capitalized or not. I think I had that teaching in a good way. The teaching did not arrive here. The thing was cut. To- okay, this is small. Any other translation? Because the emphasis there, the, the word in Greek is supposed to be what? Is it Numa? Help me check. What's the word? Numa. What does he mean? The third person of the triune God. So Jesus is saying, the words that I speak, when I speak the first deposit of my words, is not knowledge, it's a person, the Holy Ghost. So when God speaks to you, the foundation of faith is the possession of the person of God. That's what we build life on. And they are life. So it deposits a person and then it animates for a reality. So if I say I will help you, the progression of faith in your heart is a first deposit of God the helper. And then the realities that make for his help. So somebody said, God is healing us. God is saving us. I didn't have an answer to their question. To the question. As to the shape of God in the meeting. So I now told Daniel, I said, strike your key. And he began to play. And he began to play. And I began to pray. Makabato, setabalaya, viatu kabose, sikabawe. Holy, holy are you, Lord. Oh, yeah, now follow me now. Holy, holy are you, Lord. Holy, holy are you, Lord. I didn't give him the call, though. He was just playing. It. Holy, holy are you, Lord. Are you people afraid to play? Play now. Holy, holy are you, Lord. Holy, Now, so I began to respond that way because I, he was playing the chord scatteredly. Then he he now stayed with that, and then I felt that they were singing into it. By the time I opened my eyes, everybody was slain. I didn't need further proof that it was the holiness of God that came, and many people mistook the holiness of God for the purity of God. But you see, when God comes as holy. It's not God the pure, it's God the consecrated to himself. It means God forcefully begins to divert the attention of everything to himself. He becomes the center of attraction. It's about him, his plan and his purposes. That's how we close the meeting. I had to, like this, to go home. And the following morning, I was still in the room. Because I was not married at that time. So, people now came to me and... So as, so I was just lounging that by 12 I leave and I saw that the meeting was supposed to start at 7 a.m. And by 8.30, all the leaders were in the house where I was staying. I said, what's the problem? They said, after the meeting yesterday, we searched our hearts. That's what the holiness of God did. He brought the purpose of God for the now. And when they peeped into their purpose in their, in their laid down states, none of them saw the conference inside the purpose. <laughs> so... And when everybody rose up, they said the conference is cancelled. Go home. That's what the holiness of God can do. That's why to those of us who have been given transport by sound, the people on the keyboard must that's the that's the that's the need. You know how to play, but you must also know how to journey. That's why you must be attentive to every word. And that your hands as you play must not be about skill. You must lend your, just like I've lent my vocal cords to a spirit, your hands are also lent to a spirit. You will play certain things, your ability to come into the sounds. Because mm, 
Daniel was the one that picked the sounds in the spirit. And he was playing his catadly. But as long as that sound was scattered, I could not find the lyrics in the spirit. And the strength was not just in the sound. It was in the ability to bear witness to what we were singing in heaven. So what we have a few years together. Because if I begin to make a sound, Daniel knows where I'm going. That, that's that's the, the reality of joining. So the ability to come into a song you have never heard before is sharp. You know why it must be sharp? Because it is as it is in heaven. It's a time quotient. It means it must be same time and it must be same thing. I think Oba perfected that thing too with many, many rebukes. That Oba suffered in my hand. I miss him. I miss him. I miss him. I'll call him. Please remind me to call Oba this night. I miss him. Oba suffered. After a while, he stopped playing. Go and stand at the back. And then I'll bring him back. Because your spirits have been trained. So, there is first the consciousness God is here. And then there is the second imparted consciousness. And that's what brings the emphasis of God for the next things you will see. He says, holy. Holy. It means consecrated to self. Consecrated to self. Consecrated to himself. It's the Lord God Almighty. When the shape of God is known beyond the clouds, the next thing that happens is that you begin to see situations with another lens. It was not a day of alignment in Israel. Strange things were on the landscape. You can do your research about the king Uzziah. All kinds of things. But what did he see? He said the whole earth is full of his glory. It means if you go high, you will see Nigeria differently. So in the day that we are summoned to prophesy, there will be two kinds of prophets. And the differences will not be essentially in how many hours they, they prayed. Or how long they fasted. The difference will be where they are seen from. Someone below the cloud who is also only seeing dry bones. And the one who goes above. And from above the clouds, he peeps into a valley of dry bones. And his only witness is the whole earth is full of his glory. Because there's a way he sees it. There is a pattern in the confusion. That's what I'm saying to somebody. Chaos has broken out. It looks as if it's not going to work. But God has the ability to still steward his glory in the midst of the confusion. Because from his perspective, the earth has only one reality. The whole earth is full of his glory. Isaiah was speaking about the day when the emblem of the glory of God will journey without restraint amongst his people. That in every land, if you find a congregation where the spirit is the Lord, there will be access. We can download God even in a dungeon. That it's a place of monstrous entities, but it will still be a house of glory. That if someone is smuggled through the gates of, 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 of a, a criminal hideout, when it begins to pipe into heaven, the atmosphere will change. The spirit of glory. The spirit of glory. That's what God sees. That Nigeria is full of his glory. There's a lot of pain in the land, but Nigeria is full of his glory. There's a lot of scarcity in the land, but Nigeria is full, full of his glory. And when we speak of the glory of God, we speak of the compressed reality. Uh, I mean the, the compressed expressions of all of God it means God gathers all his possibilities and delivers it in the capsule that's what we call the glory of God it means if you want to do business you'll be watching Times Magazine right? you take a chart you want to know uh, 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 what is gold and USD doing what, what is B BTC USD, how is it doing? that's how you plan business but if you look from that perspective you know that if glory invades that dimension whether it goes up or it comes down it's your day when you look from this end what you see is people who have called to help you who also need help but when you look from that dimension you will see God cast himself on the earth as the helper it means it, can, it is doable what do you see how do you see 
And then where do you see from? Songwriter says, My eyes have seen the glory of the Lord. The testimony of the doctor is that you have a few more years to live. But if you, you, come, my daughter, come, 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 come. The, the promise was that for too many times that there will be no new year to come into. And she walked into every bad year that was going to be her last. Uh, the doctor said what they knew. The problem is that medical science sees under the cloud. And this is a witness that there is life beyond the clouds. As her eyes began to behold it, life began to surge. And you will live for many years. One of our daughters, that's Kendi, she was in the choir. I remember I was in the company of a friend, my son Lamide in Lagos. We were in Winners Choir. We finished rehearsals and we finished during service. We had to rush out to the teaching hospital. They slammed us a, a 21,000 for, for tests. At uh, Ibogun. So we paid. I don't even know where we got money from, but we paid. Because during the service, she just passes out. Breathing disorders. The following week, we were in church again, dancing, bloop, 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 and boom. So we ran to the hospital again. They now wrote tests for us again. I said, please go and use the one for last week. They said, no, they need to check again. And I got angry. I said, get down from this bed, we go home. What are you trying to do? I said, I've seen my pastor. That's the pastor Topper Johnson. And here is the state pastor for Ondo State now in Accra. I've, I've accompanied daddy too many times to the hospital. And there's a way he walks, scattered me. That's the way he walks into the world. Since sir, sir, you came to visit, he said, No, I came to discharge. And you have found out that every time he discharges like that, that sickness is taken out from the list of possibilities for that person. So I told them that they, this breathing thing, I came to discharge. And unfortunately for me, the nurse was also a church member. And she looked at me and said, You, these small boys, these small boys, you, you come around and you are making mouth. Is that how people talk? I said, You teach us faith in church so that we can use it. This is the last day she's going to come for this ailment. And her phone numbers are everywhere. That was the last day discharged forever. You remember my wife? We were standing in front of, and you were not my wife that time. We were just booting. That, that news time. That we, we met somebody and the person was crying. And said, uh, what's wrong with you? Said, I have a twin somewhere. So what's wrong with your twin? Said, there's a hole in the person's heart. I said, eh? Hey. Hole in the person's heart. So what's the plan? Say they are planning surgery. We are trying to gather money. Okay, so, so was right there. Say on Thursday, go and do a test in the hospital. Tell them to do a test on Thursday before they do that. And on the Thursday, the person called and said, so I said the heart is normal. It doesn't take long. It's where you see from. Do you think that God has called you to be a solution to human problems? The first assignment is not to speak. The design for faith is that faith speaks from a sight. Are you with me? There is faith is not just positive speaking. That's the major difference. The voice of faith is occasioned by the sight of faith. There is an entity that you meet and it is on the weakness, strength of the weakness of that entity that will bring forth an utterance. So if you think God has called you to be a solution, you are like an eagle. Your place is not on the ground. Because if you stay where they say, you will say what they are saying. The voice of faith is not a lying tongue. That's not what faith is. Are you with me? I've heard believers experiencing headache. They say, what's wrong with you? They say, the head of my enemy is aching. Oh, but, but it's into your mouth you are putting Pastor Mo. You mean that if Pastor Mo enters your mouth, 
your, your head is so connected, your throat is even connected to your, to your enemy's body. No. Faith does not deny facts. The voice of faith superimposes a superior witness. I know that this person is dying, but you will not die. That's faith. Let me share one more testimony with you. I shared with the house after my ordination into the apostleship. I shared with you that as we neared Abuja, my son and my daughter in the army were the ones driving. It was the wife that was driving. She don't drive excellently. I was with Pastor Ras. As we near the Ayan, I told Sheo, I said, please slow down, slow down. She's, she's an expert military driver. As she drove into town, I said, slow down. We're on about 60 kilometers per hour. And all of a sudden, what we heard was Doha. A man going to, very drunk, held by his brother beside the road, was going to church. He drank all through Saturday night. But he cannot miss Sunday service. I don't know what he saw. Ran into the road. You know all these kind of people that want to cross two cars. They go, they now cross. So he missed the other car, trying not to fall, ran into us. And we literally took him into the air. That impact dislodged our front bumper. So for you to know what would have happened. Took the car into the air, came down crashing the windshield. And then landed on the ground with a thud. It was on my side. Boom! And blood everywhere. And the only sound that could come out of my mouth was, you will live. That's all. Nothing more. And so the people rushed us, trying to tag the car, do all those things, because it was right at the Ayan market. So, if the, the traffic men came, I was trying to carry stick. I said, both of them are military men. So, everybody calm down. Lest they, they experience an invasion. Put the man, rush the man into the car, carry him, carry him. And as the man entered the car, the man who landed with a thought, whose eyes are dilated, started speaking. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. He was not just speaking. His speaking was in cog- with cognitive words. Rushed him to the hospital, went through everything. Then doctors began to check his body. Because we thought his being alive was the big miracle. If you saw the car, and you saw the blood on the road you knew that he should have died but from above the cloud the, no gates were open to him so the doctors checked from the head to the legs and I remember the doctor looked at me and said I know this face why he was probing our faces was because he was wondering because there was not one broken bone the man only had a cut at the back of his head with that impact on the road no broken, not even in the leg, no rib brokenness. This start from the hospital same day. See, you're that guy on Facebook. I said, No wonder. For me, it was the God of the man, not the man of God, who showed that if this man died, then it was an error because the cloud was beaming a living man. And dropped a scream. It was a spontaneous thing. You will live. And he lives. Some of the things that have died in our hands. Some of the areas of our existence. In family life. In territories. That seem to be under at the mercy of the enemy. Have stayed that way. Because a man has remained. When I come tomorrow and I speak of sacrifices. I will labor around how to travel. Because there are exercises that are within the boundaries of our pursuit of the Christ that men can engage that will make them exit. It, it takes a cost. That's why air transport is more expensive than road transport. Because attaining onto the heights comes at a bigger price. If you want to be a man of the earth, then your battles will be many. There are few things that can survive at the altitude. The whole earth is full of His glory. that song. You are the Lord God Almighty. The earth is full of my body is full of your you help me see Yes.
Yes. Say holy. yourself take out some time tonight and, and it's 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 a replacement therapy look into your life and write out populate it on a sheet the the witness of this realm and then trust god to begin to replace that's what the song does you are in business you find out that it's a season of scarcity Things are going south. Oh, my business is full of your glory. What we are trying to do is to give God a zone of demonstration. My ministry is full of his glory. My children are full of his glory. I know there is a battle over the next generation. But my seed is full of the glory of God. Stay with me. Stay with me. Don't go to bed until you have labored like that. This year is full of his glory. It's full. It's full. They say it's a year of blood and of fire. But it's the year of his glory. For darkness shall cover the earth and thick darkness the people. But the church has been apportioned and experienced. It is upon you that the glory will rise. Thank you, Father. He 
It's in this vein that we close tonight. We will converge at four o'clock tomorrow. May the hand of the Lord continue to be strong upon your lives. May the reality before dawn of superimposed glory be your experience in the name of Jesus. By the entrance of the glory, may the communications of the wisdom to prevail, of the sights that make for prevailing, of the energies and the resources that you require to prevail, be your experience in the name of Jesus. Tonight it was a song, but by dawn may it be an experience. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we have prayed. God bless you.